You're tuned into RT International. Welcome back. A book by a former British NATO general about a fictional war with Russia has become a bestseller since its release last week. RT's Polly Boyko asked people in London if they thought the plot's doomsday scenario would ever play out. The premise is simple. It's set one year in the future and Russia has just invaded the Baltic states and the conflict has escalated to an all-out war between NATO and Russia. Now, it was written by one of NATO's most senior retired generals, which would explain this subtitle, an urgent warning from senior military command. Richard Shireff played himself in the BBC drama broadcast back in February. It featured 10 military and diplomatic figures pondering how to respond to a hypothetical Russia's just invaded Latvia scenario. It seems warning the world of the perils of not standing up to Russia has become this former general's latest deployment. The book's author, Sir Richard Shireff, was unable to meet with us. However, he has said in interviews that he's worried that NATO is becoming impotent and he's hoping that his new book will act as a deterrent and will force the alliance to boost its defences in the Baltic states. I want to find out what British readers make of the book's doomsday scenario. It's not going to happen. Do you think that's a likely scenario? Mm, I doubt it. Why? Because Turkey is going to stop them. Is it going to be in 2017 or... I don't think so, but things will certainly get more interesting in the next few years. Well, they're certainly worried in the Baltic states, aren't they? Do you think that's a likely scenario? No. Mm, no. No. No, I don't. Why not? Because... Um, There's too much at stake. Yeah, and Putin's not that stupid. So I think we just like to create probably enemies for ourselves. Polly Boyko, RT, London. Well, among those not impressed by the new book is Britain's Foreign Secretary. Philip Hammond says the retired general was probably just trying to pay off some bills. The top diplomat also called the publication irresponsible, stressing that nobody is seriously considering a war with Russia. Moving on now, German Chancellor Angela Merkel is back in Turkey and this time has said she'll use the opportunity to condemn a new law that strips some Turkish MPs of their parliamentary immunity. The controversial law enables Ankara to prosecute more than 100 opposition politicians. Before its adoption, the divisive bill brought out the worst in some lawmakers. <laughs> Before travelling to Turkey, Angela Merkel said that recent developments in Turkey were a serious cause for concern. Her view is shared by a number of other high-profile Germans too. Turkey is moving further away from what we would expect of a democracy. If Turkey wants to become a member of the European Union, it should not destroy the rule of law. Opposition lawmakers must not be subjected to arbitrary prosecution. Well, Kurdish MPs fear the proposal targets them, as Erdogan has accused their HDP party of supporting Kurdish militants, whom Ankara dubs terrorists. And the majority of MPs that could now face investigation do, in fact, belong to the pro-Kurdish party. The People's Democratic Party, or HDP, is an opposition left-wing grouping. It's also the third biggest force in the Turkish parliament. The party support the Kurds, as well as other minorities whose members have angered President Erdogan. The fact that he or she is a member of parliament, academician, writer, journalist or director of a non-government organization does not change the fact that they are a terrorist. The ones who detonate bombs or pull triggers may be terrorists, but so are those who support them in achieving their aims. Well, the co-chair of the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party spoke exclusively to RT about many issues, including Ankara's crackdown on the Kurds. They want to kick us out of parliament because of the fact that we became the main opposition in Turkey. That's the only reason for passing this law. The government and Erdogan prefer to ban democratic parties like HDP instead of having political discussions with them. 
every time he looks at us, he sees democratical legitimacy and resistance, and he wants to push us away from parliament. The People's Democratic Party is the only party charged in being investigated for saying something or engaging in politics. All the investigations are over our speeches, things we said in parliament or anywhere we go, because of all the political work we have done and our approach as a whole. That's why the investigations against us have begun. But we won't leave parliament. If they want to throw us out, we will resist and continue being the voice of our people. The last three years, the government has pushed militarization. Thousands of new police stations were built in Kyrgyz cities, in the mountains, and everywhere you can imagine. Military prisons were built. We went through this at a time of peace. During those three years, a lot of civilians, innocent people, were killed. There were a lot of operations against the people and all kind of democratic civil unrest. We are being very sensitive in distinguishing between terrorists and people. We pay incredible attention so that civilians are not harmed by operations. It's a war crime what happened in Jizra. There have been examples like this in other countries around the world, and they were mostly condemned as war crimes. But in Turkey, a ruling power can easily commit such things, and no one has the courage to condemn it. For years, we've been claiming that the ruling power in Turkey supports ISIL. We said they have an organic relationship. We have been saying this for years, but there is still no fair judgment mechanism in Turkey, no consistent and decisive mechanism of pressure. In general, we are the ones who try to call the government to account, and in return we get attacked, massacred, stripped of our political immunity, and thrown out of parliament. We were isolated in a significant way for our assertions. The other opposition in Turkey stayed quiet. International powers remain silent as well. They support Turkey's actions by remaining silent. They have different relationships, collaborations and deals with Turkey. It would be appropriate to call on them to stop dealing with Ankara, because all agreements made in a bloody political process are dirty and blooded ones. Meanwhile, Bulgaria is urging the EU to develop a plan B in case Ankara sabotages a controversial EU-Turkey migrant deal. Under the agreement, Turkey will take illegal migrants from Europe in exchange for 6 billion euro in aid. Bulgaria is currently building a 200-kilometer fence to seal off its border with Turkey. These are, in fact, the latest pictures we have from the Bulgarian border. The fence is designed to stop the refugee flow coming from its neighbor. We believe around half of the fence is now in place. When it's complete, it will effectively completely shut off the EU's land borders with Turkey. Well, another condition of the deal is that Turkey is granted visa-free travel in the Schengen zone. That was seen by Ankara as a first step towards achieving its ambition of becoming an EU member. But the British Prime Minister has recently poured cold water on its hopes. David Cameron said that at the current pace, Ankara would not be joining the bloc until the year 3000. That's despite Brussels agreeing to accelerate membership talks with Turkey in exchange for the country's help in tackling the refugee crisis. Turkey joining the EU is not remotely on the cards. At the current rate of progress, it would be decades, literally decades, before this even had a prospect of happening. President Erdogan knows it. I have always been against Turkey's full membership, and I still am. In return for help in stemming migration to Europe, Merkel is dangling the ultimate prize of revived talks for Turkey to join the EU. Turkey is ready to work with the EU. Turkey is ready to be a member of the EU. The distance between us and Turkey is not decreasing, it is increasing because of human rights, the media and what is happening in civil society. If they want to come closer to the European Union so badly, let them prove that they can. When we look at all the terrorist threats that we are facing, you can't find any country that pursues higher standards in human rights and democracy as Turkey. So we must be treated fairly. Let's return to our breaking news story this hour. 
Now more than 100 people are reported killed in multiple explosions in the Syrian cities of Tartus and Jablay in the Takia province. That is coming from police sources telling various media in the country. Media reports are also saying that Islamic State have confirmed that they were behind the attacks. We cannot verify that at the moment, of course. Three blasts targeted the bus station in Jablay. Military sources say a fourth hit a hospital emergency department where witnesses claim a suicide bomber entered the building along with the wounded from the previous explosions. Another bus station in the city of Tartus was hit as well. Two suicide bombers detonated themselves right after a car bomb went off at the the entrance. So just to reiterate, more than 100 people are reported killed in those multiple explosions in the west of Syria. Up next in the program, Sophie Chevernazzi discusses the price the EU is paying for economic sanctions on Russia with French MP Thierry Mariani. Stay with us.